Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, good afternoon everybody. This is Professor Bikas Medi from PJ Chandigarh and I am going to discuss is one of this drug widely used that is corticosteroid. Now before I go into pharmacological action, let us discuss the history, very interesting history. If you search the literature and look at the history of corticosteroid, you could find that that initial that addition disease was described which is a fatal outcome in a patient with adrenal destruction at South London Medical Society. It was long time back 1849. Then researcher could understood in 1856 that adrenal gland is essential for life. Now, if you look back in 1930, people identified there is a cortical part that is what we name as corticosteroid rather than medulla. In 32, Cushing syndrome was described. In 1949, the steroid was first proposed to use for rheumatoid arthritis. And in 50s, if you see that Nobel Prize was given for discovery related to hormone of adrenal cortex for its structures and biological effect. And 1952 biological properties of aldosterone was described. So there is a strong history since 1949 till today that this drug, this group of drugs are used in various conditions particularly in the modern time we use lot of transplantation. So, you need immunosuppression. Now, when you go back and see the molecular like adrenal gland anatomy and how steroidogenesis take place. So, basically it is a capsule if you see the different layers like zona glomerulosa where all the mineral corticoid like aldosterone and ultimately release of aldosterone and it stimulate angiotensin 2 and also that effect on a potassium ions. Now, if you look at the zona fasciculata, middle cortical layers, it release glucocorticoid, what we talk about cortisol. And it is also been correlating that it is because of release from pituitary hormone SCTH, anterocorticotropic hormones. Now, go mode innermost layer, which release androgen, dihydroestrogen acetate or endosterin dion. So, that is from the zona reticulosa and go to med in medulla which release norepinephrine, epinephrine. So, from this capsule outermost mineralocorticoid, you know that mineralocorticoid means it affect the electrolyte. From zona glomerulosa, glucocorticoid, cortisol, it affect carbohydrate, fat, protein metabolism. Reticulosa, androgen and medulla epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, how does steroidogenesis take place? Steroid means if you look at the chemical structure, it is per hydrophenantine ring. And this is basically synthesis from start from cholesterol. So, there are two sources of cholesterol in adrenal gland. One is de novo synthesis, cholesterol synthesis from acetate. And second part, it is import from whatever circulation of LDL receptors mediated and do cytosis. So, there are two part one is from acetate another it is LDL receptors mediated to endocytosis. So, the first cholesterol that is 27 carbon it is converted to into pregnenolone that is 19 carbon in mitochondria and via cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme. So, this pregnenolone is moved to smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, it is metabolize if you see 
that what are the gene it is related cholesterol side chain like we have cytochrome p450 cc it is cytochrome 1 a and 11 beta hydroxylase it is by cytochrome 1 b1 similarly 17 alpha hydroxylates it is by shift 17 or 17 20 decimalase it is by shift 17 21 alpha hydroxylase it is by cytochrome 2 a 2 and aldosterone synthesis cytochrome p450 by b2 and aromatase by cytochrome 19 it has an importance in terms of drug drug interaction and how it mediated the actions when you use the concomitant therapy now when you look at the steroid resistance as you see that the you know it is from the cholesterol that is from the two source acetate another is by endocytosis now this pregnenol is converted into progesterone or 11 deoxycorticosterone now from this pregnenolone with the help of enzyme 17 o hydroxypregnenolone then dihydro epiandrosterone then androsterodin so ultimately it formed the sex hormone testosterone and androsterodin so this is a mechanism with the help of several enzyme that it is converted to into active form secondly when we say glucocorticoid and another we say mineralocorticoid so glucocorticoid it affect as i said earlier carbohydrate fat protein mineralocorticoid electrolyte now this glucocorticoid if you see 11 d oxycorticone it is converted to corticosterone with 11 beta hydroxylase similarly from there it is converted to aldosterone and this is also converted to deoxycorticosterone and cortisol where you find a cortison so if you see in smooth endoplasmic reticulum there is a hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase and it is effect of mitochondria and ultimately you get an effect that pharmacological action now you know that there is a diurnal variation is also mediated physiologically these steroids are released in the body like glucocorticoid in a form of hormones cortisol or corticosterone so daily secretion if you see that 5 to 30 milligram and 2 to 5 milligram in case of mineralocorticoid aldosterone 5 to 50 milligram or deoxycorticosterone so even that if you look at it, another that sex hormone androgen progesterone and estrogen like DHEA progesterone and estrogen it is also released 15 to 30 0.4 to 0.8 or trace element now this is physiological level it utmost requires because many times you have a situation like steroid misuse like in doping so you get to know that how much exogenous steroid has been used in case of misuse now how the steroid act as you know that glucocorticoid receptors present in cytoplasm and it has two reasons one is ligand binded domain and second is DNA binding domain now in case of a resting phase DNA binding domain is covered by Hicksock protein and combination of glucocorticoid it act on ligand binding domain like glucocorticoid receptor that lead to removal of Hitchcock protein 90 from DNA binding domain after the glucocorticoid bind to glucocorticoid receptor so it from the complex then it come from the complex in the cytoplasm then it move to nucleus and it bind to specific DNA segment and that lead to whatever that findings you get increased synthesis of protein or enzyme or it inhibit the protein like peptide synthesis that means inhibition of synthesis of you know uh, leading to anti-inflammatory action or in a form of cortisol so these are having that action you get a pharmacological action now detail about pharmacological action is action on carbohydrate and protein metabolism like glucocorticoid action so if you see a generalized negative nitrogen balance and hyperglycemia see whenever you give a steroid so there is chances of hyperglycemia because why hyperglycemia because it increase gluconeogenesis so in periphery you find that it mobilize in gluconeogenesis it mobilize amino acid 
and increased glucose and glycogen. And it is also through the hepatic action. Now, it also causes decreased utilization of glucose. That is why in the blood it will be increased level of glucose. It increases glucose deposition in the liver via activation of hepatic glycogen synthesis. So, if you stimulate glycogen synthesis, definitely it is more glycogen in the liver. Now, what is the effect on lipid metabolism? You can see that those who are chronically taking a steroid, you can look at the body features, you get to know that like a typically moon phase, like redistribution of fat, buffalo hump and typically round face it develop. So, you have an idea that the person or he or she is taking the steroid continuously for a chronic period. So, it promote adiponectin agent activity like glucagon, growth hormones, adrenaline, thyroxine. So, this is what that lipid metabolism is altered with steroid. Now, in case of a mineral corticoid, it affect the electrolyte and water balance. So, one of these important you know hormones like aldosterone, it is very important because it act on renal tubules like descending convoluted tubules or collecting drug in the kidney and what it does? It reabsorbs the sodium and also affect the urinary excretion of potassium and hydrogen. Now, in case of addition disease, where there is a excessive sodium loss, shrinkage of electrolyte, extracellular fluid or imbalance of hemodynamic taste like in a CBS cardiovascular system. So, circulation is collapsed. So, ultimately it causes renal failure and death. That is how we give the replacement with the steroid. Now, if you see the effect on cardiovascular system because basically it restricts the capillary permeability. And it also alter the tone of the arterials. It affect the myocardial contraction and it has a mineral corticoid induced hypertension because more the sodium reabsorb. So, definitely water will be retention. So, person develop hypertension. So, sodium synthesized blood vessel action to catecholamine and angiotensin. As you know that angiotensin 1 and which is converted to 2, it has a potent vasoconstrictor effect. So, it develop a hypertension and it affect the cardiovascular system. Now, the effect of skeletal muscle, basically steroids are needed to maintain the normal skeletal muscles. Now, what happened in addition disease? You find that person become weak, they said continuously fatigue, laziness and it is because of inadequacy of circulatory system. So, in case of a prolonged use also, it causes myopathy, that is we call it steroid myopathy. Now, as you see, the effect on CNS like it alter the mood, it alter the behavior or it causes excitability. So, there is an exaggeration of the mood, person become euphoric or there could be indirect effect like it maintain the glucose, circulation of electrolyte balance and it has been reported that that you call it intracranial pressure is increases, we call it pseudo tumor cerebri, though it is rarely used. So, there are several central nervous system alteration occurs in case of mood behavior and excitability, alter the metabolism and also senses of though it is rarely pseudo tumor cerebri. But if you look at several other drug, how many drug it is causes increase intracerebellar you know pressure. You can say one we discuss is glucocorticoid or mineral corticoid and there are other drugs like amidoron, vitamin A or oral contraceptive present like tetracycline the antibiotic. It also causes increased intracerebral pressure. So, what we call it pseudo tumor cerebri. So, there, if there is a solid mass or then it is going to increase the intracranial pressure. So, these are the drug it can cause pseudo tumor cerebri. Now, action of the stomach that basically in case of a peptic ulcer, you are not going to prescribe steroid because it causes perforation. Because after giving the steroid, 
it can aggravate peptic ulcer because it release increase hydrochloric acid secretion and pepsin and it also causes decreased immune response to helicobacter pylori. Now, in case of a blood, you can see the effect that RBC is increased in hemoglobin, RBC count, it is decreased erythrophagocytosis. Basically, it is our immunosuppression. So, in case of a WBC, you can see there is decreased lymphocyte, decreased eosinophil, monocyte, basophil, and there is increased polymorphonuclear, you know, sites. So, that is why it acts as a immunosuppression that it inhibit the WBC. Steroid used as potent anti-inflammatory like you have seen in a history that first time it was used in the rheumatoid arthritis. Because why it has been selected or prescribed for rheumatoid arthritis because it decreased recruitment of WBC or mononuclear macrophage into affected area or elaboration of chemotactic substances. So, basically when you give corticosteroid, it increase lycortin synthesis and release. This lycortin and phospholipase A2 and two enzyme inhibitory protein. So, it inhibit phospholipase A2 and ultimately it inhibit the formation of aracotinic acid which is major mediator for inflammation. Another way, it decreased leukotriene production which is mediated through lipooxygenase pathway and also it is decreased inhibit the production of prostaglandin or thombroxin A2 or prostacyclin because it is inhibiting via cyclooxygenase pathway. And all this pathway if you inhibit cyclooxygenase, if you inhibit lipooxygenase, if you inhibit posta, you know, phospholipase A2, so definitely it will act as anti-inflammatory. Another way that it decrease endothelial cell leukocyte addition molecules, these are mediation for inflammation in endothelial cell. TNF alpha different potent cytokine which is a inflammatory cytokine, TNF alpha in the phagocytic cell or interleukin 1 for monocyte and macrophage. So, there is a decreased plasmodian activator or fibroblast activity. So, there are several mechanism to act as anti-inflammatory action. But if you see the use of steroid is major use is immunosuppression or anti-allergic action. So, basically how it acts as immunosuppression we had already discussed and how it acts as anti-allergic action. Now, if you see how it suppress you know hypersensitivity or allergic phenomena. If you give a high dose, it interfere with step of immunological response. It causes greater suppression of cell mediated immunity that is how we give the steroid those who are a taking for going for a transplant patient and it delayed the hypersensitivity. Now, if in case of a transplant rejection, there is a decreased antigen expression from grafted tissue and delayed revascularization and delayed sensitization of T lymphocyte. So, that is how it act as immunosuppression or act as an anti-allergic action. Now, it is very important to understand that when you start, start steroid, it should not abruptly stop because it will affect that immune adrenal axis. So, what you do is you give the steroid particular dose, decrease and you make it a tail off. So, in order to understand that if you see that adrenal axis, that corticotropin hormone secreting from the pituitary ADH. So, these are the centers are regulated like thermoregulatory centers, immune stimuli from macrophage or different cytokines or you can see different you know mediator for inflammation like eicosanide, 5 HT, platelet activating factor, bradykinin. So, in order to you know that when you start you have to be remember that it should be used but abruptly it should not be stopped and you need to understand immune adrenal axis also. Similarly, it is also mediated with other neurotransmitter. It is released from like correlation with acetylcholine, 5 HT, norepinephrine or GABA because from hypothalamus you have a corticotropin neurons from you know anterior pituitary it release corticotrop which is a form of ACTH anterior corticotropin hormone 
and it stimulates adrenal cortex fasciculata from where the cortisol are released. So, once the cortisol are released, you can see that effect on macrophage, monocyte or neutrophil, all this WBC that it suppresses along with all the cytokine you can think of that TNF alpha, very potent inflammatory cytokine, interleukin 6, 2 and 1. So, that is how it is correlating with the neurotransmitter and you have seen that how it is affecting a CNS function and also as an anti allergy or immunosuppression along with immune system is interfering. Now, if you look at the action of the growth and cell division, basically when you give the steroid, it inhibits the cell division and synthesis of DNA. So, it automatically delays the process of healing and that is why if you give the steroid, it will going to have retard the growth of the children. Now, effect on bone metabolism, like when you use steroid for a long time, there is chances of osteoporosis because it affect the calcium metabolism. Basically, when the calcium is required that there is a decrease or it interferes with the absorption of calcium and what it does is it also increase the excretion of calcium from urinary, from the kidney. So, when there is excessive loss, so bone becomes spongy bone or vertebra or ribs. So, it is chances of developing osteoporosis is high. Now, effect on respiratory system, though it is not a bronchodilators, but it is most potent and most effective anti-inflammatory. That is why you have seen that there is a, you know, inhalation and therapy with the steroid in case of bronchial asthma, because though the effect not seen immediately, but it delayed the, you know, 6 to more hours. So, inhalation corticosteroid is very much used for long term control of as a anti-inflammatory or to suppress the immune system in respiratory system. Now, look at the pharmacokinetic absorb, how it is, if you give orally, all are rapidly completely absorbed except deoxycorticosteroid, which is given subcutaneously. So, another is, it is 75 percent bind to tenscortin, then 5 percent albumin and 20 percent is free. How it metabolize? It is metabolized, we have already shown that how many cytochrome and gene are involved for metabolism. It is metabolized by liver enzyme with conjugation and excretion in the urine. So, it is partly excreted with as 17 ketosteroid and T half you can see that it is cortisol is 1.5 hours. Now, let us classify all the steroid. So, looking at the chemical structure, you can say how many are in group A steroid. So, you can name hydrocortison, hydrocortison acetate or cortison acetate, tixocortal pivalate, prednisolone very commonly used, methyl prednisolone very commonly used and prednisone. Now, how many are in group B that is acetonamides, acetonides, we use commonly triamcillin acetate triamcillin alcohol, monomension, mcunide, budesonide, desonide, flucanide, flucanide acetonide and halcyonide. So, there are several in group B and group C we start with blactomethacin, sorry betamethacin. So, betamethacin we have a sodium phosphate, we have a dextromethacin, we have also dextromethacin sodium phosphate with flucortal, flucortal, flucortolone. Now, in D category, we have a esters, D1 halogenated less liable. So, we have hydrocortison 17, valerate, we have aclomethacin dipropionate, we have betamethacin valerate, betamethacin. So, there are several drugs in group D also. And in group D2, we have liable pro drug esters like hydrocortison 17 butyrate, 17 acetonide, 17 butyrabaramide or pre predni carate. So, we have you know D1 category halogenated and we have 
D2 category which is liable as a product. Now, we need to understand that there is a relative activity of systemic corticosteroid. So, you look at the half life, some are very short acting. So, if you use short acting preparation where T half is less than 12 hours. So, you have an example that if you short, uh, short acting less than 12 hours is cortisol. So, it is potent anti inflammatory and it has a potent you know properties that it retain the sodium salt. So, the form it is doses form it is available is you can give orally or there is an injectable also and there are topical preparation also. Now, in case of cortison another it is a potent anti inflammatory point 0.8 it has salt retaining properties and it is usually formed in oral formulation. Now, that is for short acting drug less than 12 hours. Now, in case of the drug steroid preparation which is T half is 12 to 36 hours. So, you can see that we have prednisolone potent anti inflammatory earlier it was 1 cortison or cortisol it is now prednisolone has 4 salt retaining properties 0.3 it is orally available. So, we have a prednisolone and potent anti inflammatory salt retaining capacity available in oral and injectable form or we have methyl prednisolone very very potent anti inflammatory action and it has also salt retaining capacity it is available orally or injectable then we have triamcillin where it is available it is very potent anti inflammatory action but there is no effect on salt retention so it is available orally injectable and it is also widely used topically third group of drug is longer acting preparation where you find that half life is more than 36 hours so one of the drug you can say dexamethasone compared to whatever we discuss short acting and intermediate it you look at that anti inflammatory properties very very potent and there is no salt retaining capacity and the available form is it is given orally injectable and it is also widely used topically similarly beta methasone it is compared to dexamethasone it is more potent but there is no salt retaining capacity so it is available orally injectable and topical now another drug it is paramethasone weak anti inflammatory action no salt retaining capacity orally and injectable so you have seen short acting less than 12 hours intermediate acting 12 hours to 36 hours and beyond 36 hours that is a long acting preparation which are very very potent anti inflammatory action like dexamethasone or beta methasone with no salt retaining capacity. So, some of the mineral corticoid we have like fludocortison has a anti inflammatory properties and very potent very potent salt retaining capacity basically it retain the salt sodium along with water retention is occurs and orally it is available. Then we have a dextrocorticoid, dextrocorticoid acetate, no anti inflammatory action, but it has a salt retaining capacity. So, it is given in injectable form, but there is some other form is pellet form is also available. Now, when you talk about aldosterone, physiologically it is available and see that it has minimal anti inflammatory and it is one of this hormone its potent salt retaining capacity and this drug is not used clinically aldosterone physiologically it is working. Now, in case of a bronchial asthma or respiratory disease we use several corticosteroid in bronchial asthma we use baclomethasone dipropionate. So, the doses you get it 50 milligram per meter dose or 100 200 and also we have a rota capped 100 200 and 400. Another group of drug is flu cortison propion where you get 25 to 50 microgram and 50 100 and 250 for the rota cap. and another is budesonide we available 100 to 200 or 0 0.25 to 2.5 in a it is in inhalation and in a capsule form. So, 
Coming to the topical steroid, most of the time invariably dermatologists they use topical steroid like baclomethasone dispropionate. So, preparation available is 0 0.025 cream and it is very potent. Then we have another preparation baclomethasone benzonate and baclomethasone valerate where you form 0 0.25, 0, 0 0.0525 and 0.12 percentage in a form of cream and ointment. So, we have several preparation like Clobacil, Halcinoid, Triamcillin Acetate, Flucosin Acetonide. So, there are Flucartison. So, there are several preparation is available and most of them are very, very potent and some are moderately potent and ultimately if you look at that hydrocortison Acetate which is used as an ointment 0.1 to 1 percent, it has a mild effect as a anti potency. Now, all this topical preparation benefit of use topical preparation is it acts as anti-inflammatory. Other than anti-inflammatory, it has a immunosuppressive capacity and it is a potent vasoconstrictor. So, it is also act as an anti-proliferative action. So, if you want to discuss some of the good response like in ectopic ex eczema or allergic mediated contact dermatitis or lesion penis or primary irritated dermatitis or seborrheic dermatitis or in case of you take an example of psoriasis in a face or varicose eczema. So, it has very good response when you use the steroid, but it also acts as a slow response like in cystic acne or alopecia erota or in case of you know autoimmune disease like lupus syndrome or hypertrophic scar or in case of a steroid. So, it has a slow response including lysen planus or psoriasis in the palm or elbow and knee. So, it when you use the steroid though it has a response, but compared to like atopic eczema or allergic it has a slow response. Now, when you use steroid you need to understand the therapeutic principle. What I said earlier is a tail off use appropriate dose selection because physiologically it is released and when you use steroid there is frequent monitoring and evaluation is required. If you use a single dose there may not be any harm. If you use the dose few days therapy there is unlikely, but still you have to be careful. So, look at the incidence of side effect it is depending on duration of therapy. So, if you use only palliative like for a replacement therapy or intercurrent illness doses usually double. Please be remember that abrupt cessation in prolonged high dose what we I said earlier lead to adrenal insufficiency and it should be avoided and it is contraindicated. When you start steroid therapy use for a long time suddenly it should not be stopped you should go for tail off. So, if you look at the dosing schedule the goal of therapy is you want to relieve the pain, you want to you know relieve the distressing syndrome like in case of rheumatoid arthritis very painful or it is inflammatory pain. So, you start with a lower dose lets the person or patient become responsive to the therapy, but in case of a life threatening condition like pampigas initial dose may be high or in case of severe rheumatoid arthritis also you give a pulse therapy. But only thing is you need to understand that you need to prevent pituitary excess alteration suppression. So, that is why we also have to think that diurnal variation you start with single dose morning or maybe alternate dose therapy short lip glucocorticoid or in case of a higher dose you have to use you have to use the pulse therapy. Now, what you do how you do steroid withdrawal in case of a longer duration of therapy or you maintain a slower the withdrawal like suppose for example, less than a week take how you are going to withdraw few step because repeat withdrawal there is 50 percent reduction of dose every day. 
So, slow withdrawal like you start with 2.5 to 5 milligram penicillin, reduce interval is 2 to 3 days. Now, in case of a longer period of or high dose, half dose weekly until 25 milligram penicillin or equivalent to reach. Then later you reduce 1 milligram every day at the interval of every 3 to 7 days. Now, as you could get an idea that it is therapeutic use for androkine as well as non-androkine, multiple use are there. Already we discussed that endocrine disorders in case of acute adrenal insufficiency, you give the replacement or in case of a primary adrenal insufficiency. In case of adrenal insufficiency secondary to anterior pituitary or if you have the patient with congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So, therapeutic use are endocrine. Now, in case of a non-endocrine, we had discussed arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. So, corticosteroid are not drug of fast choice. You start with pendidolone 5 to 7.5 milligram. Sometimes it is also given intraarticular injection in case of rheumatoid arthritis and also uncommonly in osteoarthritis, it can be given intraarticular injection. Now, in case of rheumatic disease, carditis, which is not responding to salicylate or severely ill patient, then you start penicillin 40 milligram in divided dose. And usually salicylate is concurrently to prevent the reactivation. So, these are non-endocrine therapeutic use of this. However, other non-endocrine you can have a renal disease like in case of nephrotic syndrome, you give immunosuppression like penicillin 60 milligram divided dose for 3 to 4 weeks or if there is a remission occurs, it continue for 1 year. But you do not modify the course of, it will not modify the course of disease, only it is it suppressive. Now, in case of a disease affecting collagen disease like we have, you know, lupus syndrome, Tempe gas vulgaris or polyarthritis nodosa. So, basically in this disease, what happened there is a defect of connective tissue, protein in the joint and various organ and ultimately it is multi organ is involved. So, you use pregnisolone 1 milligram per kg start, gradually you reduce the dose in case of collagen disease. Now, in case of allergic mediated one, particularly anaphylactic reactions or if there is an anaphylactic reaction take place following a blood transfusion or maybe a drug related event, hay fever, prednisolone usually gives a short course. Now, we have discussed about bronchial asthma, though it is not routinely used in status adnocritus, but in methyl prednisolone is given IV given or oral preparation and we have the different preparation of inhalation we have discussed, but we need to see also minimal effect on hypothetical like uh, HPA axis suppression. Now, in case of ocular disease or in case of outer anterior segment local application, so there are various topical preparation are available or it is also used systematically. So, if you can see that you have to be cautious about bacterial, viral and fungal conjunctivitis when you use steroid. Now, in dermatological condition like we have pampy gas, life saving you know uh, drug is steroid, eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, it respond very well when it is used in dermatological condition. Disease in gastrointestinal state like we have IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. Though the patient not responding to conservative management, it may benefit to glucocorticoid when you use the steroid. Now, another situation is cerebral edema. Though there is a question value of cerebral edema following the trauma or cerebrovascular edema, but it is edema associated neoplasm parasite, parasitic infection or in case of a malignancy part of multi drug you know regime acute lymphocyte, uh, lymphoblastic leukemia in children or chronic lymphatic leukemia in adult. So, this has a role in order to reduce the edema. Now, another one's liver disease glucocorticoid is used in case any autoimmune hepatitis. 80 percent of the patient, it shows the histological remission with prednisolone or in case of severe hepatic disease also use prednisolone 
it is preferred. In case of a shock, often helpful for convincing that, but there is no convincing evidence. But in case of acute infectious disease, we use as an anti stress or anti toxic effect, use in case of gram negative septicemia, endotoxic shock, TB meningitis, usually in tuberculosis it is contraindicated, you need to remember, or miliary TB or encephalitis. So, appropriate antimicrobial agent is must when you manage this patient. Now, if you look at the miscellaneous use, now there is ample of use because there are a lot of transplantation is going on, kidney transplantation, liver transplantation, pancreatic transplantation, lung transplantation. So, it is widely used. Patient having Bell's palsy, steroids are used, very, very effective. Thrombocytopenia or myasthenia gravis, in case of spinal cord injury or sarcoidosis, it is been used. Many times, you use the drug for steroid for diagnostic use in order to diagnose Cushing syndrome because it is ACTH dependent, anterior corticotropic hormone dependent, a pituitary tumor or ectopic ACTH secreting tumor. Of course, now we have a radiological evidence for diagnosis like you go for CT and MRI. Otherwise, non-ACTH dependent like obesity or tumor in adrenal cortex or we go for dexamethasone suppression test is done. Now, to look at the source of androgen uh, like production in case of hirsutism, what they use is dexamethasone suppress androgen secretion from adrenal cortex. So, steroids are used for diagnostic purpose also Cushing syndrome and other disease. Now, as you know that it should be judiciously used, one has to be very careful. Moment you go for a short term to long term therapy, the precaution should be utmost is required. Now, if you look at the adverse reaction like metabolic toxicity, it causes iatrogenic Cushing syndrome. As you see that, that fat metabolism is altered, body fat distribution is altered when it is used chronically. It, it causes hyperglycemia because increased insulin, decreased utilization of glucose, glycosuria or diabetes. It is usually causes laziness, affect the muscles. So, it causes myopathy negative it is because myopathy is negative nitrogen balance. Chronic use always there is a chances of osteoporosis because it inhibit the absorption of calcium, it accelerate the excretion of calcium from kidney, retardation of growth in children. Person may have hypertension, edema, congestive cardiac failure or there could be avascular necrosis of humor. Now, as we earlier discussed that hypothalamus uh, pituitary excess suppression is occur and there are a lot of mood changes when you use a high dose or chronic dose. Usually, it causes euphoria or psychometric reaction, there could be suicidal tendency, one has to be careful. Now, in case of ocular, normally when you use topically any of the steroid, it can cause increased intraocular pressure. And when you use systematically, there is chances of cataract, posterior subscapular cataract. So, otherwise, it has action of immunosuppression, or that is why there is chances of infection to conjunctiva. It causes delayed wound healing, steroid causes arthropathy, chances of peptic ulcer, ultimately can cause perforation. In case of a live vaccine, because it is immunosuppressive. So, typically when you use for a chronic purpose, chronic long term therapy, patient usually double buffalo hump, cataract, become moon phase, increase abdominal fat, skin become thin and there is chances of bruising also, bleeding. Now, you need to know that following condition you should, it is contraindicated, it is never prescribed steroid. As you know it is immunosuppression, there is chances of infection. So, in case of any infection it should not be prescribed. In case of hypertension with congestive heart failure, you cannot prescribe steroid. As you have seen CNS effect in case of psychosis or present 
reporting with peptic ulcer or diabetic mellitus, osteoporosis or glaucoma or in case of pregnancy, you know, pregnancy, it is contraindicated. Now, one has to be very, very careful that you have to take a precursor. So, you go for routine check when you start the therapy. So, at least following examination is done in order to get the maximum benefit during and after steroid therapy. For example, you check the body weight because there could be water and minerals retention is there, fat distribution is affected. For osteoporosis, you look for x-ray of the spine and other bones. You check the blood sugar level, glucose level. You examine the eyes because chances of cataract in case of systemic steroid and it also causes hypertension. So, routine check of blood pressure is routinely done. Now, we have glucocorticoid antagonists also. The drug which is used glucocorticoid antagonists are mitoten structure it is similar to DDT and basically it is used in adrenal cancer. Then another drug we have is metairapin, metairapin it is inhibit 11 beta hydroxylase. Then we have aminoglutathiamide inhibitor which convert cholesterol to pregnenol. So, it inhibit that. So, typically you call it medical adrenalectomy if you give this drug because it cannot convert from cholesterol to pregnenol. Then we have another drug is trilostane. Basically, trilostane it inhibit the pregnenolone to progesterone and this drug is used in Cushin syndrome. Now, one of the drug is very commonly used popular drug as antifungal because it inhibits cytochrome P450 enzyme is ketoconazole. The drug has lot of drug drug interaction and ketoconazole it inhibits the steroid synthesis in adrenal cortex or in testis and it is used in Cushin syndrome and another condition it is used is carcinoma of prostate. Now, as you know that mephipristone, mephipristone is basically is glucocorticoid receptor antagonist and it is a has a potent anti-progesterone activity. This mephipristone is also used in Cushin syndrome. Then another drug is etumidate. Now, what it does etumidate, it inhibit the cortisol secretion from sub-hypnotic dose and it primarily inhibit cytochrome P 11 B activity. So, this is used off level use, but not recommended by regulators in case of hypercortisolism. So, as you see that we have different drug like start from mid to 10, which is used for adrenal cortex as an antagonist, metaidopen it inhibit 11 beta hydroxylase, but we have also medical adrenalectomy because after giving aminoglutathiamide, it cannot it inhibit the conversion of cholesterol into prednisolone. Then another drug is tylosten. It is used in Cushing syndrome. Cortisol has a wide applicability in case of Cushing syndrome. Also, it is beneficial in CA prostate, cancer prostate. Mephipristone is used because it is glucocorticoid antagonist as well as antiprogesterone. So, we have several drugs which is used and some of the drug is also used as off level. Now, what about mineralocorticoid antagonist? Drug commonly used mineralocorticoid antagonist is spironolactone, aplineron, drospiren. So, what it does spironolactone or aplineron? These are the agents that compete with aldosterone receptor and decrease the effect peripherally. So, the spironolactone it is use in primary aldosterism and the dose is given is 50 to 100 milligram per day. It can be also used as a diagnostic purpose like in case of a woman with hirsutism. So, because it is androstan, androgen antagonist and it is used as diuretics, potassium sparing diuretics. So, as you see that we have you know several that steroids are used looking at a category, B category, D1, D2 categories and 
also depending on half life less than 12 hours or less than 36 hours or more than 36 hours. So, it is widely used, but only thing is that one has to be careful that using steroid for a very short time single use or couple of days, but in case of a long term one has to be monitored carefully in order to prevent the area and also you have to look at what are the condition it is contraindicated, it can cause problem. And we have glucocorticoid antagonists and we have mineral corticoid antagonists also. So, if you have any questions we can discuss and all the questions are welcome. Thank you very much.